Good night, Calvary Assembly family and friends. I want to welcome you to this program, Let's Build a Bridge, as we build a bridge back to the heart of God through studying of His Word. Now, in this new series, we're studying the Holy Spirit, the person and His work. As uh, following up out of uh, Pentecost, we want to unravel some more information and get to know who the Holy Spirit is even more so we can have powerful dynamic experiences with Him. Get your Bibles ready, notepad, pencil and everything. Don't forget to like and share the video, all right? So let's get right into it now. Welcome back to Let's Build a Bridge. As we continue the study of the Holy Spirit, the person and His work, amen. And t t for tonight's uh, installment, I want to go on to this. Uh, here is yet another benefit of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. I want to open that to you in Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. Let's begin with prayer. Father God, thank you for all that the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives. Since we came to know Jesus, so much has been revealed to us, O oh God, and we're just excited about what you are doing for us, Heavenly Father. We don't need to struggle on our own, and we don't need to set standards. We don't need to labor, O oh God, to, to be righteous, because the Spirit of God in us makes us the children of God. We thank you. Help us, God, to walk with you faithfully, O oh God. Walk in obedience. May the Spirit of God continue to reveal truths and empower us, God, that we will walk as you expect us to walk with you, Father. Bless us as we study together. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to begin at Romans 8, uh, verse 11, as we, as we talk about yet another benefit of the Holy Spirit. You're going to like this. Um, Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Praise God. So uh, here is what it's saying. In the context, this verse belongs to the discussion of resurrection and the wonderful hope of eternal life in Christ. Amen. So if the same spirit that raised him from the dead dwells in you, when your mortal body is uh, planted into the ground at the, at the coming of Jesus Christ, he will quicken that body. You will rise again. Hallelujah. It's talking about resurrection. However, however, watch this. There is more because the spirit will not just be residual and inactive until your death and time for resurrection. His very presence in the now brings miraculous power into our lives. Hallelujah. I'm glad that the Holy Spirit is alive and powerful. Hallelujah. And He's not just sitting waiting until the time of my death and resurrection. Glory to God. As we walk with Him, remember we talked about the symbolisms the last session of uh, how He works as represented by various symbols. And we know that as long as He's with us, something is going to happen. It's dynamic and it's ongoing. Now, Romans chapter 8, verse 11, it speaks of he shall quicken your mortal body, right? Uh, the, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies if the same spirit dwells in you. What does that mean? Well, I looked up the Greek word for that. I can't even pronounce the Greek word. But here's what it means. It means to produce something alive, to beget or bear living young. We're talking life here, life producing. To cause to live, to make alive and give life. In other words, sort of like reviving what's been dying or is already dead, reviving that. Um, number three, by spiritual power to arouse and to invigorate when you feel your energy is going down, here is, here is the power to invigorate you. To restore to life, hallelujah, whatever in your life is dying, 
The Holy Spirit is there. When you pray, you pray in tongues, you pray in the Spirit, you sing in the Spirit, hallelujah. You allow your, your, a more, your conscious awareness of His presence, hallelujah, you connect with Him. Oh, I tell you, there's a lot of energy flowing and He restores to life. And then He says, to give increase of life. Thus, the same of physical life. So this speaks of healing. Um, if your life is broken, if you have carried losses physically, amen, sickness we're talking about, he brings increase of life, healing, and uh, spiritually quickening as respects the spirit endued with new and greater powers of life. Hallelujah. I tell you, there's so much joy when you come to realize what the spirit of God is doing in your life. For example, when we talk about uh, sowing seeds, the seed goes into the ground. Remember that Jesus says, if a corn of wheat falls in the ground and dies, then it will produce fruit. Now, the sim similar concept, um, the seed goes into the soil and is quickened into life. It germinates, it springs up, it grows. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit will do that in your life, my friend. We could conclude that the Holy Spirit heals our bodies, renews our spirits. He makes us whole body, soul, and spirit all to the glory of Jesus Christ. The world around you will know something different about you. You're so much alive. You're so full of life. And then you can tell them, well, you know, since I came to know Jesus, I don't live a drab life anymore. Um, I see true meaning of life, and I'm just excited about living for Jesus. So we can do the work that he has called us to do for him. Praise God. Finally, he will raise up our bodies from the grave when that time comes. The Spirit of God will raise up that body from the grave at the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I like how Paul writes that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And he said, the body will be sown in dishonor but it will be raised in glory. What a day that will be. So uh, let me talk a little bit and give you a little discussion on tongues, the speaking in tongues at the day of Pentecost and since then onwards. That's become a normative experience for the body of Jesus Christ. So at the Tower of Babel, you'll remember back in the book of Genesis, there was a unity among the people and they started to build a tower, a tower that would reach to the heavens. And when God saw that, God says, these people are united. There is no telling what they can accomplish now. And God said he was going to confuse them by various languages. I want you to notice the mercy of God there. Um, God did not destroy them but he simply wanted to scatter them. It was God's original intention that they would um, have dominion over the earth, that they would spread across the earth and, and go and inhabit the, the whole earth. But instead of going out to inhabit the earth, they made a decision that they're going to stay together and they're going to build a tower reaching up towards the heavens. And that was not God's will for their lives. Amen. So there was unity of mission but misguided in purpose god wanted mankind to spread throughout and take dominion of course man will always honor his creator and god will take pleasure in man's victories amen however when man decided instead to build a tower that will reach to the heavens it was defying god it was in defiance of God's will for their lives. Their vision fostered unity, strength. When they came together, there was strength and high achievement, but it was not in God's will. And so God stalled the project by giving them many languages and they became confused because their unity was pursuing misguided ideas. So each language group went their separate ways, and now God's will is being accomplished. They are spreading, and they're inhabiting the whole earth. Amen. 
In, in that case, languages, listen to this now, languages unknown to each other caused a scattering of the population. I bring you to Pentecost now. At Pentecost, God gave them languages that caused amazement and attracted men to himself. Here is God's will rolled out in unity, in strength, because now they're united in God's will and high achievement all for the glory of God. On that day of Pentecost, 3,000 people got saved. And shortly after that, another 5,000 got saved. The church has been alive since that time. There have been persecutions, there have been trials, there have been hardships, amen. But the church remains alive and will be alive until Jesus comes again because he's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. So uh, the, uh, the Pentecost was followed by glossolalia, the speaking in an unknown tongue in prayer and worship. On the day of Pentecost, they were speaking in several languages, foreign languages. But that followed the speaking in tongues, an unknown tongue, as we have studied many lessons that we have been covering. And that continued on in the New Testament. Out of this experience would come the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So speaking in tongues is a common language that unified the church, energized them in God's will, empowered them against attacks from the kingdom of darkness. God redeemed at Pentecost a situation that was troubling at the Tower of Babel. Now the church is empowered to do God's will. We are to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to all nations through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus chose this particular day, Pentecost, to pour out his Holy Spirit on the believers, marking the transition from the dispensation of law to the dispensation of grace and the beginning of the last day's harvest of souls for his eternal kingdom. So we have moved like this. We have moved from law to grace. We have moved from natural harvest to spiritual harvest. The natural harvest was the celebration of Pentecost, by the way, um, to spiritual harvest now. We have moved from visiting the temple in Jerusalem to becoming the temple. Every believer is a temple of the Holy Spirit. We have moved from weakness to empowerment. We have moved from fear to intimi uh, fear and intimidation to boldness. You remember Peter and the, the disciples, they were hiding, they were fearful, but we have moved from fear and intimidation to boldness because of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. And we have moved from walking in the flesh to walking in the spirit. Glory to God. Amen. Why did God choose tongues as the sign? Glossolalia. Speaking in tongues. Praying in tongues. Singing in tongues. And uh, as you know, it the tongues is unknown to anyone. Um, nobody understands when you speak in tongues. We have done some studies on this before. So 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14 tells us one of the reasons why God's, uh, God uh, gave us the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, right? 1 Corinthians 14, 22, it says, Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not, for prophesying serve it not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. So tongues here, the speaking in other tongues, is a sign for unbelievers to be aware of God's presence. Hallelujah. James chapter 3 verse 2 says this. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. Speaking of the use of the tongue, all right? If any man offend not in word, 
The same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. You read through this whole context. You'll talk about, you see how James is just unfolding, un, unraveling this, that uh, believers are in church and we misuse our tongues so much. Verse number six, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body and set it on fire, the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. In other words, this, uh, this misuse of the tongue, the tongue, is, the tongue cannot be tamed. You read through this and it will tell you that. Uh, verse 7, the the uh, ver, uh, verse 7, all manner of creatures have been tamed. Verse 8, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. And so it is with people who like to talk and say things. And listen, the best thing God can do is take control of your tongue. The tongue controls a person's destiny and can inflict wounds on others. God wants to use your tongue for his glory. Amen. Get filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. And anytime you're tempted to gossip or say something negative about somebody, you just get speaking in other tongues and glorify God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, tongues is unique for the church. Remember that all other spiritual manifestations and miracles were already in evidence throughout the Old Testament. Some are still uh, continuing because the same God we serve, amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, amen. Um, but the speaking in tongues uh, became normative for the age of the church. Hallelujah. Now, it is a fulfillment of the prophetic word. I want you to see this. Um, Isaiah chapter 28 and verses uh, 11 and 12, it says, uh, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, uh, uh, yet they would not hear. Amen. Uh, verse 10 says, For precept must be a prompt precept, Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And then verse 11, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Some people like to think that it was God's people trying to learn the Assyrian language. I don't see that fully in this text of scripture. Maybe it does apply in some way, but I'm thinking that he's saying with stammering lips, and another tongue will he speak to this people. And then he says, to whom he said, this is the rest, wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Now, what is the rest and refreshing? To learn the Assyrian language? Um, to my mind, I, I know that when the Holy Spirit works in our lives and we were going through the symbolisms and, and the, uh, the dove and the oil, and, and we went through the fire and the wind and... Listen, this is the rest and the refreshing. This is what God wants to give to us when we begin to flow in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, it is found wherever New Testament believers were filled. I did a study on this earlier. Acts chapter 2 verse 4, on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit was poured out. They began to speak in other tongues. Acts chapter 8. Verses 14 to 20, we talked about that, where uh, uh, believers were filled with the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Ghost and they began to prophesy and speak in tongues. Acts chapter 10, verses 44 and 46, and remember the home of Cornelius. Um, they received the Holy Spirit. They began to prophesy. It was a manifestation of the speaking in other tongues. Acts chapter 19, when Paul went uh, to Ephesus. And Paul says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And he laid hands on them. They received the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. A spiritual communication with God in a private prayer and worship is what this is all about. First Corinthians chapter 14, 
particularly verse 4 and verse 15, but that entire chapter 14 speaks of the value, the benefit, the joy and excitement of praying in that other language. Amen. Um, it is also a means of intercession, Romans 8, 26. We're uh, Romans 8, 26. Praise God. And here's what it says. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Friend, when you come to a place where you don't know how to pray, you don't know what to pray for, you begin to speak in other tongues. The Holy Ghost begins to pray for you. Listen, if the Holy Ghost in you, God in you, is praying to God the Father in the name of God the Son, you can be sure you're a winner. Hallelujah. What a wonderful thing that God has given to us, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Let me pray with you as we close this off today. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this time we spent together just studying your word, getting a greater understanding of our dear comforter, our friend, our paraclete, the Holy Spirit. Thank you, O oh God. May the Spirit continue to move powerfully in our lives, O oh God. Uplift the dumb trodden, strengthen the weak. Make a way for those who are stronger to move forward in ministry, O oh God. And let Christ be seen and be glorified in our lives. And Lord, I pray for the needs of people here today in Jesus' name. Whatever their needs might be, we serve a God of miracles. We serve a God of the impossible. And I pray that you'll make it happen for them. Heal the sick. Restore their losses, O oh God. Come and bless them. Strengthen grieving ones, O oh God. And continue to enlighten us with the great hope that we have in Jesus Christ. I thank you for doing it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me in this Bible study as we continue to study the Holy Spirit, who He is, and what He does for us. Now, I want to encourage you to pray that you would have a dynamic relationship and a powerful experience with the Holy Spirit. These programs are uploaded every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. And you, it's always there. If you miss it in real time, you can review that. Now, our services are Friday night, 7.30 prayer meeting. On Sundays, we have two services, 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. In between, at 9.30 to 10.30, there is a Sunday school hour for all ages. And we praise the Lord for what He's doing here. So don't forget, Sister Shanti and I love you. Be well. God bless you.